Well, uh, good afternoon, everyone, and a welcome to another great day in the history of the Wilmer Institute, where we'll be dedicating our 11th rising professorship at Wilmer, very special recipient. And it's my uh, pleasure to welcome you to the Boone Pickens Atrium as we dedicate the Boone Pickens Rising Professor. So if there's a theme here, it's that uh, we, we've been blessed with the uh, support of a great uh, Wilmer board. And Mr. Pickens was part of that board during his lifetime. And his daughter, uh, Liz Pickens Cordia, is with us and, uh, and represents the Pickens family and her dad uh, on the Wilmer board. Uh, it's thanks to the Wilmer Board that we have this wonderful building and so many wonderful things that we have at Wilmer. Without the support of our board, uh, the Wilmer wouldn't exist the way we know it exists uh, today. I'm delighted to uh, 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 welcome uh, to Wilmer for this event uh, Dr. J. Wigodari, the our PhD or provost uh, for Johns Hopkins, and Dr. Anthony Rosen the Vice Dean for Research uh, here at uh, Johns Hopkins. And uh, um, I'm particularly uh, happy to welcome uh, Dr. Johannan's family, who's here with us today to celebrate this uh, very special and wonderful event in uh, the career of a brilliant young scientist, doctor, uh, and clinician. Uh, uh, Dr. Johannan trained here at uh, at uh, Wilmer and uh, also got his MPH as well as his MD here at uh, Johns Hopkins and uh, uh, stayed on to be, or after a fellowship in, up in uh, Canada, uh, stayed on to be chief resident at Wilmer. Those are our most stellar uh, residents who are asked to come back and lead our residency uh, and make sure our residents are learning all the things that they need to learn to become outstanding clinicians and uh, surgeons. Uh, fortunately, after that, uh, he stayed on as a faculty member and has chosen a, uh, brilliantly chosen, a uh, exciting field of using artificial intelligence to predict uh, the behavior of the disease glaucoma in individual patients, so really driving us to achieve success in personalized medicine. In addition, he's a remarkably accomplished surgeon, uh, even though he's uh, uh, one of the younger members of his uh, division. These rising professorships are, are meant to uh, catalyze the careers of our brilliant young faculty. And we're delighted uh, to have 11 of these rising professorships uh, so far. And I'm told we have another 14 that have been pledged or people's estate plan. So uh, we believe it will be a um, crucial uh, contributor to Wilmer's long-term success to have um, these investments in the careers of our uh, stellar young uh, faculty here at uh, Wilmer. So it's now my uh, pleasure to welcome uh, to the podium our Vice Dean for Research, Dr. Anthony Rosen. Anthony. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Peter. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's a really great pleasure to be here this afternoon on this uh, wonderful occasion. Um, and I welcome all of you who've, who've joined uh, uh, to really celebrate a, an extraordinary um, rising professor. Um, on behalf of the Johns Hopkins School of Medicine, I'm honored to uh, help with this dedication uh, of an endowed uh, professorship. Uh, endowed professorships allow for both creativity and stability, enabling a great medical center like ours to sustain its forward progress. The generosity of supporters to, of the Wilma I Institute, paired with the caliber of its uh, really exceptional faculty, allows Wilma to serve as, as a model for other departments of ophthalmology around the world. We are uh, extremely grateful to Mr. Pickens and his family for this opportunity. The Boone's Pickens uh, Rising Professorship is a unique career-changing opportunity for its inaugural recipient, Dr. Jethan Johannan. 
equivalent to Wilma's traditional professorships for senior faculty members, rising professorships equip young investigators with extraordinary uh, resources at the beginning of their career um, and really adds years of uh, productivity uh, to what is likely to be really a, a stellar set of accomplishments. Today, we honor and celebrate Dr. Hannon for his many achievements. With his unique blend of expertise in biostatistics, epidemiology, uh, mathematics, and ophthalmology, he's really an ideal modern recipient for uh, ophthalmology research. Uh, he leads a groundbreaking team at the Malone Center for Engineering and Healthcare. And as Peter mentioned, he focuses on the use of artificial intelligence to improve the diagnosis and management uh, of glaucoma. Uh, in addition to his uh, research accomplishments, he's a skilled clinician, uh, as, as Peter already noted. Uh, his commitment to advancing the field of ophthalmology is reflected in his really extensive publication record and numerous national and international lectures where he shares his insights uh, and findings. Uh, thank you, Dr. Hannon, for all you do for the field of ophthalmology and accept our sincere congratulations. Um, my role really was just a fill the space because what we do now is we uh, hand the professorship over to, uh, to the university. Um, and so I invite, invite uh, our provost, uh, Dr. Ray Jayawandana, to join me up here to accept the professorship on behalf of the university. And I'm just going to get the plot. Ray, on behalf of the uh, Johns Hopkins Medicine, it's a pleasure to present this uh, rising professorship, the Boone Pickens Rising Professor in Ophthalmology uh, to Johns Hopkins University. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Ross, and, uh, and good afternoon, everybody. It is indeed a pleasure for me, on behalf of Johns Hopkins University, to formally accept the Boone Pickens Rising Professorship. Uh, it's uh, a great pride for me to recognize the formal establishment and dedication of this rising professorship. Um, those at Wilma who hold rising professorships, you can see them on the wall here, conduct some of the most significant and high impact research and bring considerable prestige to the Johns Hopkins name through their collaborative multidisciplinary work. Um, their work makes this a great university, a great medical school, uh, and their ability to chart new courses of research and patient care comes in no small part from the reliable support of an endowment like this rising professorship. Of all the gifts that a university receives, few make a more profound and lasting impact than the creation of an endowed professorship. It represents an enduring source of a university's excellence and impact and enables us to recruit, retain, and support the world's finest researchers. So on behalf of the university, congratulations on this fantastic achievement, Dr. Yohanan. Thank you for your contributions to medical research and patient care at Wilma, and for the work that you will continue to do long into the future. So at this time, I'd like to invite Dr. McConnell back to the podium. Thank you again. Thank you. Um, Mr. Boone Pickens was very public about um, his battle with eye problems and that he was a patient here at uh, Wilmer. At one time I, I asked him if uh, he would mind if we put an article with him in our uh, magazine and he said that he was happy to do that but he wondered why, why, did, did, why did we care? And, um, and I said, well, a um, couple things. One is that um, you're Boone Pickens and, and you can get your eye care anywhere, and you chose uh, to come here. And, um, and it would reassure people that, who come here when they know that someone who could go anywhere in the world for his eye care would come here, they would feel, okay, I'm, this must be a good place, I must do the right place. And, uh, and he, uh, he, he thought that, that resonated very much with him. And then, uh, and I said, and then the other thing is, uh, uh, if you Google, does not suffer fools gladly, you get his picture. <laughs> and, uh, and he's like, yeah, that's right. And so I said, so 
you know, uh, it, it sends a message that we, we meet the standard that someone like you uh, feels uh, comfortable with. And, um, and so uh, he, he went along with it. And uh, he was a person, he had, uh, uh, he was a, uh, an athlete and in school and uh, got training in science. Um, but, uh, but he wasn't seven feet tall. And while he, while he did not end up a colossus on the basketball court, he was a colossus in, in business and industry and s sort of um, invented the field of shareholder activists. They call them shareholder activists these days. In the, in the days when he was active, they tend to call them corporate raiders. And so I think they, they rebranded themselves as shareholder activists, and that was smart. But his, um, his feeling was there were certain companies and boards and, and CEOs that weren't working as hard on behalf of their shareholders as they could. They were instead enriching themselves, and he felt that was wrong, and he spoke up about it. And, and he was a tough uh, cookie. So the fact that he, um, in a sense, endorsed us with his, with his uh, uh, gift of sight and tr trusted us to uh, take care of him meant a lot to, uh, to all of us at uh, Wilmer. And uh, when we were uh, working to raise the funds for this building, uh, I asked him if he would put us over. We were told that we could not break ground until all the funds were available. And I asked him if he would put us over the finish line. And um, he said he'd think about it. And then about a week later, an envelope showed up in my office, hand addressed. I opened it up. It was a personal check uh, signed by him. Uh, made out to the Wilmer Institute for $7 million. And I thought, people write personal checks for $7 million? But, but he did. And um, when we dedicated the uh, Boone Pickens, first Boone Pickens professorship at Wilmer, went to his cataract surgeon, Dr. Stark, Walter Stark. Uh, Boone said that people often ask him, Does, uh, wh which makes him feel better, making money or giving it away? being a philanthropist, because he was very active in philanthropy. Um, UT Southwestern benefited all uh, places, and uh, he supported Alzheimer's research up in Alberta, I think it is, and, and through his own um, philanthropy and the philanthropy of the foundation that he started, and his daughter and his friends oversee today, he's had this uh, big impact. Anyway, he said, People ask me, which is better, making money or giving it away? And he said he thought maybe giving it away, but just by just a little bit. <laughs> so, and he was, uh, he was great at making it, and he was also great and generous at giving it away. And he's had a big impact on us, I think, and uh, he, he's very heavily responsible for the fact that we have this building that transformed Wilmer, that we have the this Boone Pickens atrium in which we can hold events like this, and that we will today dedicate the third Boone Pickens professorship at Wilmer, and it will not be the last. So he's going to have a lasting impact for decades and centuries, at least, um, at Wilmer. And so I personally am very grateful uh, to him and to his family and friends and um, and they're represented here today by his daughter, Liz, who just had her 39th birthday. So congratulations, happy birthday. Happy birthday, Liz, and um, thank you for, uh, and, and you and your dad for all the things you've done for Wilmer. Please come up. You all have to forgive me, I'm not the orator that my dad was. I love that you mentioned that he was an athlete. He would have quite loved that. He was only five foot nine, but he had a basketball scholarship to Texas A&M, which is pretty hilarious. Well, he lasted one year and he lost his scholarship. So he went to Oklahoma State to pay for Coach Abba, who was a very famous basketball coach. And Coach Abba looked at him and said, Pickens, you aren't fast enough to scatter leaves. So he did not 
get to continue with that basketball scholarship. My grandfather told him that he had four years to get out of school if he, and he would pay for it. So there, he, that's what he did. I want to say what a huge privilege it is for me to get to represent him and get to be a part of this board. I'm not a scientist. I've raised children. I've been on every committee known to man on their schools. But to get to be with all you brilliant scientists, it makes me feel a little bit smarter just for the day. Um, I just want you to know that if you carry my dad's name, I'm going to follow you a little bit. <laughs> I actually got to meet with the other two uh, Boone Pickens uh, professors this morning. It's just so much fun. Their enthusiasm, I love your youth. My dad would love this program. I kind of feel like Peter picked it for him. It's like the businessman's idea of what the medical industry should do. And I'm so tickled to have you. And you don't know this, but it was glaucoma that brought my dad to Wilmer Eye Institute 50 years ago. So. He didn't have glaucoma, but my granddad did. And my dad was on a hunting trip, and I think it was with Halliburton, and I'll be darned if he didn't meet one of his best friends, Dr. Walter Stark, there. And um, we were all so sad to lose Walter a few months ago, but it, they just got to talking, and my dad didn't know he was a doctor. He didn't know what he was. could have been the oil in industry. And um, found out he was an eye doctor, so my dad said, you know, my dad's got glaucoma. Well, Walter started paying house visits to Amarillo, and he got to go hunting and sometimes to a football game. And they really developed a lifelong love of uh, sport and not necessarily of football because Walter was for the other Oklahoma team. But they really were f fast friends, and that's how our relationship with Johns Hopkins started. And then Walter ultimately diagnosed my dad's uh, macular. So here we are. But I'm so excited to get to meet you. And we are going to be, I hope, pals. And, uh, or you may not know that. Just pretend if you. Uh, uh, but I'm, I'm excited. And um, you know what, Peter? Walter could have been the greatest eye surgeon. <laughs> anyway. I will, uh, I don't know, do I, am I supposed to give it to somebody else? Back to you, Peter. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Well, thanks, Ms. Cordia, and uh, thanks to our fellow faculty and friends of Wilmer who are here today. I mean, there's a lot of good things that have to happen all at the same time uh, to really allow a gathering like this to happen. So. Obviously, the generation of, of you and your dad, um, and um, the Johns Hopkins leadership, who you know really puts a lot of effort and dedication and financial resources towards the research that Justin and others do. I mean, we take for granted things like review boards, grants administration, research space, um, EMR access to EMR data. You know, the culture of discovery that we all live in. And we kind of think that this is like, you know, and actually we kind of usually complain about those services, but they're actually really critical for allowing us to do what we do and allowing you to do what you do. Uh, I really want to kind of shout out to people at Wilmer who have really been instrumental in creating a culture of research that has really uh, flourished and allowed not only to have all these rising professorships, but to have the people who can actually fill them and really make the mission behind them really very successful. Sheila West was, uh, I'm the Sheila West Professor of Ophthalmology. Sheila West was Dr. Yohannan's mentor um, during, uh, during his MPH year while he was at medical school in Johns Hopkins. Harry Quigley, who I think you know, has really set an you know, impressive ethos for our division, that it's been really my honor to try and continue on and, and, and keep going strong. Uh, people like Jim Handa, you know, who oversee the K Award Committee and review people's grants, you know, and, and, and just do that selflessly, you know. So, and then finally, you know, Jethin's uh, home support as well, which is really important as well. So his, his uh, wife, Maitri, his daughter, his in-laws, his parents, who support him when he's got to travel, when he's got a big grant deadline, when he's really busy clinically, you know, these things are all necessary too. About Dr. Uh, Yohannan, he graduated from high school in New York State, and then he went to New York University and graduated summa cum laude, and then came here to Johns Hopkins for medical school. Uh, he also completed his residency here at the uh, Wilmer Institute at Johns Hopkins. 
I met Dr. Johannan, but didn't really know him well during his MPH year when he worked with Dr. West. Um, when he joined our residency, I worked with him clinically and also eventually in research as well. And this is maybe the only time I'm gonna prop myself up because the one really smart thing I did, I had a project that we had already been working on quite a while, and it was to take the visual field test that we do. So if somebody has glaucoma, you measure the sensitivity to lights, you know, with a number of different stimuli. Everybody hates this test. And you never really know whether the test is accurate. So does it capture what's happening to the patient or does it not? And there was all this common wisdom about what makes something accurate or inaccurate, but actually nobody had proven any of that. So um, we had done a study to say, actually, we're going to prove what makes it, when, when a test is reliable and when it's likely to be unreliable. And, uh, and I thought this would be a big paper. And, uh, and, um, and I said, well, you know, I just don't have enough time you know, to finish this project. Let me get Dr. Yohannan to see if he'll help with that. And he agreed. And it was a big paper, so it's been cited over 130 times in the last five years. So it's like doing pretty well. And, uh, and uh, I think what was very uh, prescient about that is not that it's been cited a bunch of times, that it's changed people's practices, but that it kind of inspired him to do a bunch of more work. And, you know, that, that idea that I kind of, you know, helped give him one paper, he's given me back like 20 or 30 times on that. And he's, you know, and it was really a springboard for him developing many, many of his own ideas, and one thing that we really admire about Jithin is, is its capacity to come up with new, innovative questions, and that's a, it's a tough skill to have. So I'd like to highlight some of the really transformational ideas that he's had. <coughs> you know, so in glaucoma, we have this concept of a target pressure, of what, you're, what we think that your pressure ought to be for the disease to likely not worsen, and we've been very big advocates for this idea here at Johns Hopkins, but there's actually until recently, with Dr. Johannan's work, not a lot of evidence to show that this really works. But Dr. Johannan did a project that really gave this concept some real teeth. So he actually showed that with regards to how quickly glaucoma gets worse in people, if you're actually below the target pressure that a clinician sets, it doesn't matter what the pressure is. Any number below gives you pretty much the same result. On the other hand, if you're above the target pressure that the clinician sets, the amount that you're above means that you get worse that much faster. So he actually showed that the target pressure actually matters and that people should set target pressures and use them because it's probably going to lead to better patient outcomes. <laughs> the second major uh, line of work that he's done, which has been referenced already, was really, uh, I want to talk about two parts of it. One is that you know, he's, a very, um, he's very intelligent about how he works, both in terms of working with smart people in a very collaborative in functional way. And then second, he's, you know, he's very good with ideas as well, and he's just very efficient in how he works. So he mixed together a lot of skills that kind of go unseen. So you know, he's formed critical collaborations with Chris Bradley here at Wilmer, with uh, Matthias Unberoth in computer science, and with his own you know, uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning skills, but also the really advanced analytic skills of these other individuals. He's really been able to do work that he couldn't have done by himself or that most people really don't have the opportunity to do. So his big you know, call to fame is that he has really created these algorithms to understand who is likely to worsen, using data that you might get or in, in one or two uh, visits with the person. And, and the, reason behind, the reason this being important is very obvious. So if you know who's likely to worsen, then you can be more aggressive in them so you don't let it happen. I think that flip side is also equally important. So if you know that somebody is unlikely to worsen, then you don't have to be very aggressive. You know, you can kind of take your foot off the gas, and sometimes we do too much in terms of our treatment of patients, and so it allows us to be smart in both directions. This work is very important for other reasons that may not be as obvious. So when you have predictive algorithms, you can actually use them to validate other methods to judge disease progression. For example, we have Dr. G. Yi, who is a brilliant um, a biomedical engineer who creates new imaging technology that he thinks will be able to detect glaucoma more accurately and more quickly. But in order to prove this, he needs a set of people who actually got worse. So well, how are, how are you going to find these without just finding everybody? And only about 10% of our patients get worse. So either you can just get everybody and throw out 9 out of 10 people, or you can use algorithms to highly enrich that sample, which is exactly what he did. So he and Dr. Yohannan have a grant together to, uh, to work collaboratively to understand whether this imaging technology will be better based on the individuals that he picks out as being the highest risk. Uh, <laughs> finally, 
you know, we, we have dozens of clinical, uh, dozens of products in glaucoma, you know, drugs, uh, implants, other things that, um, <coughs> that, that could potentially protect against glaucoma independent of somebody's eye pressure. But they've simply not occurred because the cost is very high. So one way to address this is to find patients who are likely to have their glaucoma worsen because it's actually easier to see if a drug takes somebody down from a rapid level of worsening to a slow level of worsening as compared to an almost imperceptible level of worsening to no worsening. That's very hard to do. So you want to get people who are likely getting worse and getting worse quickly. This is what his algorithms do. He already has a paper showing that if you use these algorithms, you can cut down on the, uh, on the cost of these trials by about a third to a half. And I think he's still got more work to improve. <coughs> this is a big idea. He got a six-figure grant from Arvo, our big uh, scientific society, to, uh, to support this work and also from an independent outside organization as well, another six figures, to support the same idea. So it's, it's clear that people like this idea and value it. So um, in short, I wanted to uh, really thank Jethan and uh, all the amazing work that he's done. I also just wanted to comment on him as a person. You know, you, you, you hear about all these, oh, you know, he's a super surgeon and, you know, does this research and is in artificial intelligence and machine learning, and you think that you're going to get a kind of a nerdy lab rat type of person, you know, you'll see him talk in a second. And that is very far from the truth. So, you know, he completed an anterior segment surgery fellowship in Toronto. <coughs> he was our chief resident. He's our busiest glaucoma surgeon. He takes care of many of our most complex cases. He's very, very skilled, even though he's one of our junior faculty. And he's, like I said, very good at building a team, uh, building a schedule. And I think this is really going to propel him to a lot of success in the future. And he does all this work, and yet you can see that he is, uh, he's a great husband, he's a great father. So, Jithin, congratulations on what's already an amazing career. I can't wait to see what discoveries you come up with with the Boone's Pickens Rising Professorship. So. I've got to follow the menu. Um, so, Pradeep, thank you very much for that, uh, for that great introduction of Dr. Johan. And I, I will point out that um, I had had a Tuesday, which was as bad as my Monday. Um, so by the time I came here, I, f I felt jaded. And I really uh, sense that, that all of that's lifted because the, you couldn't ask for a better moment to spend um, really celebrating such young talent with great opportunity um, and, um, and really well-deserved um, for this award. And, I think my job, only job now is to give you this medallion, um, which is, if you want to join me up here, which is for the Boone Pickens Rising Professorship. And may you use this with, with really great, great um, um, use over the next several decades and do all the amazing things that they expect from you. Thank you. So, Thank you so much. And they want to pick the Well, um, thank you for the uh, very kind words, uh, Dr. Romelu, Ms. Cordea, Dr. Rosen, Dr. Jaswara, and Dr. McDonald. It's uh, really an honor uh, to be up here. Um, and uh, I wanted to take this time to uh, remark on some of the things that I've noted um, and that are very meaningful to me over the past, uh, you know, over my time training both as a medical student here and as a uh, faculty member and as a resident. Um, so this moment is not just a personal milestone, but an incredible, incredible testament to the institution that Wilmer and Johns Hopkins represent. So often when we go to conferences or when we're catching up with friends, uh, we get asked, why, why do you stay in academic medicine? Isn't it difficult to succeed? Aren't you working harder for less money? Um, and so you have to have a good response to that. And I think the reason that I stay in academics is, is twofold. So one, being in academics really allows you to dedicate time to building something meaningful for the sake of improving patient lives and advancing science, rather than for any other, you know, ulterior motivation. And the other big um, thing about academics is you're surrounded by brilliant people, and you get to build really meaningful relationships with the brightest minds in the fields, um, through various roles, being a mentee, being a mentor, or being a colleague. And I think that, that Wilmer in particular offers the gold standard template for what a, 
special academic program is that is supportive of junior faculty. And I think it, it does this in two key ways. So first, it's the, uh, the people that are at Wilmer. And um, I, uh, I think that the people here make these institutions truly exceptional. And in terms of how the, the culture is special, I think it's really the culture of mentorship that's been fostered here. And I've been uh, fortunate to be guided by some of the, the finest minds in the field as mentors. And first, I want to really thank Dr. Romelu, who you've just heard from. So I've known Dr. Romelu since the MPH year, but really uh, since my first year as a resident. And his uh, mentorship was pivotal in my decision to pursue glaucoma as a career. He spent many countless hours discussing research and career trajectory. And um, I, I owe many of my accomplishments uh, to his dedicated guidance. So um, Pradeep is often known for his pearls of wisdom. And I know that uh, he says that I'm, I'm good at team building. But actually, one of the first things he said to me is one of the, the biggest things that you can do as a leader is to make a good team. And that's like really stuck with me as, as my um, career has progressed. And so it's, it's, it's guided me into building a strong and capable team to accelerate the work that we do. And Pradeep, you are not only a dedicated mentor, but I consider you one of the most intelligent, caring, and ethical physicians I know and a great friend. So thank you for your guidance. Um, the other uh, big mentor at Hopkins for me was Michael Boland. Even though that he's no longer here, he was instrumental in setting up my research career in data science, including, um, including me in large collaborative grant proposals and inviting me to speak at multiple research conferences. Uh, we've had many insightful conversations about the intricacies of wrangling data, as well as implementing uh, AI models for risk prediction. I'd also like to really thank my colleagues and mentors at the Malone Center, uh, Matthias Unberoth and Greg Hager. Uh, they continue to share their insights with me at our research meetings. And it allows us as a team to incorporate the latest insights in artificial intelligence into clinically relevant glaucoma problems. Um, and their guidance has been uh, instrumental for many grant ideas, including the R01 that we are just about to submit tomorrow. Tomorrow's the deadline. So got a, got a few things to wrap up tonight as well. <laughs> um, I also want to thank Dr. Quigley, um, who's here today. Harry, thank you for the many hours you spent discussing career trajectories and reviewing grant proposals. Uh, your detailed feedback and unwavering support has been critical to my growth, as well as uh, the other senior, more senior clinician in our glaucoma division, Dr. Jampal. You've always been a tremendous supporter of junior faculty, and so thank you for your guidance. Um, I'd also like to thank my fellowship mentor, Ike Ahmed. So during fellowship, even though he's not a Hopkins person, he really pushed me to excel both clinically and surgically by continuing to try to improve in both areas. And so I think the, the interesting thing about Ike is that he pushes you to be at the edge of your comfort zone, to always be a little bit uncomfortable in what you're doing so that you'll always grow. And I think that that strategy, always being slightly uncomfortable, either in research or trying to learn a new thing or to be a little bit more efficient in clinic or in the OR, has really accelerated my development as a clinician and surgeon and a scientist. So I, I take that piece of advice with me wherever I go. And there are countless many other mentors here at Hopkins who have trained me in both clinical and surgical care as well as research, who I could spend all afternoon naming. And each of them has played a critical role in my growth and journey. So thank you all. Uh, second, I want to talk, that was the people portion. Second, I want to talk about the system here at Wilmer. And I, I think that the systems at Wilmer and Johns Hopkins are really designed to accelerate the careers of, of junior faculty in particular. And I want to thank Dr. McDonald for fostering these systems and um, creating and managing many of them. Uh, some examples that I want to point out are, are the grant review committee led by uh, Dr. Handa. Uh, that has been really a tremendous resource in getting our grants honed for, um, um, for funding either from the NIH or through foundations. Um, and then the, the amazing team uh, that manages both the clinics and the surgical centers, uh, even though we often do have frustrations with them, I think that it's, it's overall very well run and lets us to take care of patients in a very, um, very um, efficient and meaningful way. Um, 
And then I'd like to thank the Development Office for all the amazing work they do in, uh, in securing our institute's core mission of curing blindness and training the next generation of leaders. And in particular, I want to talk a little bit about these rising professorships, because they really do provide essential support for junior faculty. And I don't think uh, there is any other academic department in the entire country that has a similar program. Um, and in particular, I'd like to thank uh, Liz Cordia and the, the Pickens family for their, their generosity to Wilmer over the years. Um, they have been very steadfast supporters to uh, Wilmer, both uh, clinically and on the research side. And um, I'll personally ensure that your support really helps accelerate the care of our patients and limits the, uh, the um, development of blindness in the future. Um, and I guess I'll have to start cheering for Oklahoma State now, um, which, is, which is okay, because I went to NYU, Hopkins, and University of Toronto, which are not known for their football team. So I think I, think I can do that. Um, so, so I'd like to talk a little bit about how we'll use this rising professorship. Um, and as you all know, these rising professorships are not based on uh, past accomplishments, but on future potential. And I'm really humbled by the achievements of the, the full professors who are sitting in the audience today and that are on the plaques on the wall. And my accomplishments to date pale in comparison. Um, in particular, as you heard from Pradeep, um, our team develops artificial intelligence models. And these models we've shown can predict the likely trajectory of patients with glaucoma. So from an initial visit, we can, we can with fairly good confidence tell whether they're a patient that is going to lose vision pretty quickly in the future or a patient that will be stable over time. And so one of the fundamental issues with this type of research, it's very hard to translate clinically unless you develop systems that can display these model results to clinicians. So we'd have to essentially collect patient data, send it to the cloud for the model to process, and then get that that information back to the clinician in real time to show a risk score or give them some sort of summary of what, what this patient's risk is. And right now, that type of system is not in place. And so uh, one of the big uses of, of the Boone's Pickens professorship will be to try to get that system in place where we develop this system that we can display a risk score to a clinician. And then the clinician can potentially use that risk score to say, hey, you're someone that looks like is going to be very stable in the clinic, so I'll space your follow-ups to a year. Or you look like someone that may be getting worse, that, that has a high risk of getting worse more quickly, so I'll see you more often or even offer earlier medication or surgery for you. And the the benefit of having this system in place is we want to show that these models work. In order to show these models work, we need to do a clinical trial comparing patients that are treated with recommendations from the clinician, from the model given to the clinician, compared to patients receiving standard care. But if we don't have that system in place to display the model results, then that clinical trial is never going to happen. And so I think I'm hoping that we can use this, these funds to develop such a system. Um, I also want to uh, thank my, my wife, Maithri, who has been a constant source of unwavering support over the past 16 years. I'd like to thank her for her kindness and dedication. And our two and a half year old daughter, Saisha, <laughs> who uh, brings immense joy to our lives and teaches me new things daily. Uh, to my parents, Mathai and Shirley, who are here today, thank you for immigrating to the US from South India when I was four to start a new life. Um, and to give your children a better future. You taught me the importance of hard work, dedication to family and community, and unwavering love. Thank you for molding me into the person I am today. And thank you all for your attention and for everyone else who has made this professorship possible. Your support and encouragement mean the world to me. And together, we can achieve great things for our patients. Thank you. Congrats. Thank you. Uh, not that nerdy. Is that the finest, <laughs> finest compliment you've ever gotten from your director? The committee is actually a committee of senior faculty that select the most deserving uh, people for these rising professorships. And I don't recall even the word nerdy uh, coming up. They, they, you were selected because of um, your intelligence and what, what they, they knew you'll do and, and in so doing bring distinction to the 
Pickens name. There's a, a rule in the university that professorships aren't aren't actually awarded until uh, the until they're unveiled. So, uh, Jithin, if you and your family would come up and unveil your plaque, then it'll be official. <clears throat> <laughs> very well done, very well done. Uh, so now, now that it's official, we have a reception. We hope you'll be able to, to um, stay and join us and welcome or uh, congratulate our awardee and uh, mingle with our board members that are here uh, today and uh, help uh, celebrate this wonderful day at Wilmer. Thank you all. <laughs>